why why don't you want to do No, now 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 that's the way. Good morning. Um, I would like to welcome you, uh, dear international master in service engineering students and professors, to our ceremony. And uh, we would like to welcome uh, our dean of our School of Science and Engineering, Professor Dr. Michael Tarlakis. Thank you. Service Engineering. Um, today is a day of uh, emotions actually. One reason is that uh, uh, this uh, program uh, has been coordinated by one of our uh, good friends, uh, good uh, colleagues, uh, Professor Christos Nicolaou, who uh, passed away recently, unexpectedly. And uh, he was one of the people who was really looking towards the future of uh, our continent, towards the future of our country, towards the future of our university. And um, this uh, joint master's program is an example of his uh, efforts and uh, the efforts of the staff of the Department uh, of uh, Informatics, of uh, Computer Science of our university, uh, to promote uh, the collaboration uh, between uh, uh, the students and uh, professors and researchers in uh, this field of computer science. This is one reason of being very emotional today. Um, the second reason is that, as you all know, we have a referendum next uh, Sunday, and uh, this referendum, uh, unfortunately, has uh, a wrong question, a question about the memorandum of understandings, which is beyond uh, our uh, willing. We, uh, we are part of Europe. We want to be part of Europe. We want to remain in Europe. And uh, as you probably can see, in the logo of the university, we have Europe. This is a picture of Europe, and here it says Europe. So we are Europeans, and we don't want anybody to risk uh, our uh, movement towards uh, the future of Europe, towards the future of uh, the European people. So this, uh, actually, this uh, uh, master's program is a good example of uh, what uh, the people of Europe can do when uh, they collaborate and uh, when they are coming together, discuss, and uh, promote uh, science, promote research throughout the Europe. It's for the good of the European people, for the good of the world. And uh, our mission is uh, to uh, uh, go this uh, movement uh, further, to step to the future, and we want uh, to be all together. So for me, it is very important that uh, you are here, that you participated in this uh, program, this master's program, I would like to congratulate all the students for their graduation today, to congratulate all the professors for helping these uh, students to get uh, one step forward in their careers. And I hope that uh, nobody will stop uh, the, uh, the future of uh, Greece, the future of uh, Europe. Thank you very much. And, uh, Thank you, uh, Dean of School of Science and Engineering, Professor Akin Karolakis. And we would like to welcome our Chairman of Computer Science Department, uh, Professor Hans Sakhaili. Engineering, run jointly by the Universities of Tilburg, 
Stuttgart and Crete. IMSE being designed at the interface of software service systems and business processes, aspires at preparing students for becoming the thought leaders and entrepreneurs in emerging technologies such as cloud and service computing. Back in the early 80s, a brand new department of computer science, the first of its kind in Greece, was inaugurated here in the island of Crete. The department was founded by people with a very clear vision to make this place known internationally for high quality research in all areas of modern computer science, as well as for the high level of commitment to educating and building career opportunities on behalf of students. Thanks to the vision and know-how of its founders, the department started with a clean slate, attracting high-caliber Greek scientists from abroad to fill early faculty positions. Among these young expatriates who left an established career abroad to return home was Christos Nicolaou. Back then, Christos was leading a research group at IBM's TJ Watson Center in New York introducing multi-processor technology and load balancing in commercial transaction processing systems. Based on his research, performance and availability were dramatically increased for flagship IBM systems during the 80s and early 90s. As a result, Christos was awarded IBM's Invention Achievement Award in 1992 and IBM's Outstanding Innovation Award in 1993. During the early 90s, Christos returned to Europe, trying to distill the American industrial ways in science and technology into the infant, back then, CS department in Crete. And he soon did much more. He became the president of the leading research university in Greece, spearheaded a major campus construction effort, and opened the university to international cooperations. Much because of his efforts, the University of Crete is now highly ranked in the list of the top universities in the world until the age of 50. Christos did much for this. He did his share to make sure that the original aspiration remained the same. He argued that this place has to be extrovert, to always invite new people, to blend the new with the established, to try to be constantly renewed every tool. Today is a day where we celebrate and we honor the new IMSA graduates, the graduates of a program that Christos devoted a great effort and love to establish and run all these past years. Also, it is a day where we commemorate Christos, acknowledging his contributions to the university and to the program. So, congratulations and my best wishes for a successful career. Thank you. I would like to thank you, the Computer Science Department, Professor Thomas and I would like to welcome Professor William Anahoyla from the Pan Coordinator of the University. Hi guys, I'm very happy to be here, but like the previous speakers, I also do have some second thoughts about today. Of course, we all uh, very much miss Christos, he was always the driving force behind our program, and I already tried to express that early this week. Probably knowing him a little bit, he would have uh, recalled a, a myth now that, uh, that Zeus abducted uh, Europe here to Crete. So, uh, knowing him a little bit. So um, I'm very happy that you guys are here, that you can graduate. You have been selected out of roughly 50 uh, uh, applicants before. It was 15 of you, 14 different nations. Can you believe that? So we really bring together here Europe. And this really makes me very, very proud. Uh, you guys went out to different countries to do your internships. You went to Norway, you went to Switzerland, for example. Germany, some of you decided to stay in, in cold, rainy Netherlands, although today it's very hot there and tomorrow it will be something like uh, 37 degrees, which is an all-time high, I guess, so even warmer than, than, than here in Greece. Um, 
the, your predecessors, your colleagues, your alumni, they went out. They are very success, successful in industry. All of you guys, uh, at least uh, before, managed to find good jobs at prestigious companies, international companies like SAP, uh, Google, for example, and IBM. And we are very happy about that. So as you know, uh, we are working on the future of, of IMSE, and we would like to continue it in some way. We are still trying to figure out how exactly we will do it. So maybe we'll have exchange programs, for example, in the long run. But for sure, what we want to do is we want to continue uh, what uh, Christos, in fact, did start. And this is, uh, for example, the summer school. So we'll, we want to do that uh, for the future. So I uh, will not uh, take too much more of your time, but let me congratulate you uh, again here from this, uh, from this place. In fact, uh, you have been an excellent group, let me say that. Uh, we have uh, five of you who will uh, get a degree with distinction and even will get one cum laude, at least talking from the Tilburg University perspective. So that really makes us very proud and, uh, and also very happy at the same time. So um, I guess that more or less wraps it up and I will congratulate you face to face later on. We would like to thank you for the wonderful project, yes, And we would like to welcome our associate professor, Ryan Kodinui. Hi, good morning to all of you. Um, dear students, congratulations for your achievements. Uh, for graduating and making these new starts in your professional life. IMSE has prepared you to become service engineers at the intersection of software service systems and business process management. It has also enabled you to explore exciting international business collaborations. In the era of the Internet of Things, where new service markets unfold, the realization and management of software service systems as well as the design of technical infrastructures that supports them, provides exciting professional opportunities. As you know, one of the organizers and driving forces of the IMSE program was Professor Christos Nicolaou. His sudden death has been overwhelming and painful. Life can be so fragile. Professor Nicolaou was one of my teachers, collaborators and colleagues at the university. I would like to take this opportunity to say a few words in his memory. With his scientific expertise, enthusiasm and ethos, with diligence and kindness, he was committed to serving the University of Crete and the international academic and research community. When Socrates was asked to define the educated man, he did not mention anything about the accumulation of knowledge. He said, education is a matter of behavior and gave the seven main characteristics of the educated people. Those who control unpleasant situations instead of being controlled by them. Those who treat all events with bravery and reason. Those who are honest in all their dealings. Those who face unpleasant situations and people calmly and with good intentions those who can control their pleasures, those who are not defeated by their misfortunes and failures, and those who do not become arrogant by their success. Professor Nicolaou, our friend and teacher Christus, had all the above characteristics. He was an active teacher, researcher, and citizen. Despite the various difficult circumstances, he continued to contribute to the university and academic community with courage and ethos. This behavior is so rare and viable and very much inspired many of us. Professor Nicolaou believed in NIMSE and dedicated a lot of effort in this program. I'm sure he would have been very glad and proud to see your academic growth and achievements. IMSE creates a wonderful network of knowledge and collaboration. During these difficult transition times, such networks of excellence, of knowledge and collaboration encourage us and support us. I'm pleased to remember 
that education is not the feeling of a vessel, but the lighting of a fire. I would like to thank you, Associate Professor Mario Papadopoulou, and I would like to welcome Professor Frank Lehmann from the Partner Coordinator University of Turkey. In fact, I'm not the coordinator, it's Bernard Bicham, but Bernard Bicham got sick, uh, surprisingly. So my congratulations from the Stuttgart side, but also from Bernard side. Uh, so we heard a lot about Christos, I owe Christos a lot. I thank you, so I'm not going to repeat it. Um, so you're armed with a lot of knowledge, what a service engineer, service scientist should know. The IMSA program is, has been much broader than just service sciences, you have been taught bunch of cloud computing, economics, you have been taught data science, and I know that you are, will become very successful in your jobs. Please remember my, my, my warning, especially those of you who graduated cum laude, consider a PhD, right? So uh, just think about that, because then your career changes even get higher. So my congratulations. Thank you very much. I would like to thank you, Professor Frank Heyman, and I would like to invite um, our invited speaker, Associate Professor Mario Paul Curie from University. So I was wondering, uh, does this work? Is this working for the from for the transition slides? No, that's the Okay. Right. No, I don't want to touch this then. Uh, okay. So um, today I'll try to actually yeah. discuss some of the research topics that really excite me, and maybe I can convince some of you to actually perform, continue your research, and perhaps continue for a PhD studies. And uh, we would love to have you uh, in one of these uh, three universities as a student, as a PhD student. So today I'm going to give um, some, um, uh, I'll present some of my research activities related to try to empower users with recommendation and providers with data analytics. And this is a work that has been supported by a Research Excellence Grant, a National Research Excellence Grant, and the Google Faculty Award. And it is, of course, a work uh, that I did with some very talented students here at the University of Crete and Porth. All right, so all of you know about Internet of Things, uh, that they offer a wide range of new services, research challenges, and even uh, business opportunities, a lot of business opportunities in different areas. Service systems are often very large, very complex, uh, where there are different entities uh, that interoperate, interact, uh, um, and are designed and constructed to provide the service, yet, because of their large size and complexity, often the providers, their operations are not always as planned. So I think that this doesn't work, so I'm, I'm not going to use it. I have loud voice. I'm Greek and I spend a lot of time in New York, so I can do it with loud voice. Can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. So there is uh, a, a dramatic growth of opportunities for services and new markets. And this growth has been triggered by all the developments in networks, mobile computing, uh, the various new different services, uh, the virtualization, the cloud computing, uh, and the advances uh, in networks. Uh, and the markets and the different services become larger, as I said, and more complex. Uh, at the same time, we have new service-oriented technologies, um, complex service systems, and uh, so that gives a lot of challenging issues related to modeling and simulation. Um, there, is, uh, there are various uh, requirements for providing quite experience. Uh, uh, and there are different 
business aspects for service composition. Um, people enter in services and impose their own requirements and challenges. And there are a lot of exciting issues in service innovation management. So if we uh, try to observe the different new paradigms in service markets, we see that there are four driving forces that have changed the landscape, namely the technological innovations, the environmental pressure, the new economic reality, and new values. And these characteristics have uh, uh, imposed new cooperative business service models. And you're familiar with this new carpooling business cases, Airbnb, uh, or for crowdfunding or crowdsourcing, etc. So um, in there, if I want to be a little bit closer to my research, uh, where I'm working networks, uh, and wireless networks specifically, we see these new business paradigms even for network connection sharing where different devices are enabled to create a small ad hoc network via Wi-Fi and share resources, for example, share information or the network connection. So, for example, here we have this case where Henry is at the airport, he doesn't have any cellular connection, but he can use a Lenny's connection to the internet to connect, to communicate. So he communicates with Eleni via the wireless Wi-Fi network, and then he used Eleni's cellular connection to connect to the internet. So, and this paradigm is very close to my heart. It was a part of my PhD last century, but only now, 15 years later, it became a business paradigm, and you have, for example, phone that supports this application, this type of services, as a business case. And what we observe in this new landscape of the technology is that new services now uh, that use this, uh, 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 they have active participation from users, where users uh, share the resources, share information, measurements, uh, network connection, etc. Uh, they create exciting new business cases. And I'm going to discuss more uh, this specific paradigm. Uh, and let me also mention that there are different types of incentives for enabling this cooperation among users. It could be altruism, common values. It could be financial incentives like micropayments, miles, coupons, uh, passes, or it could be some more social type of incentives like reputation-based um, systems. So today I'll try to be a little bit more technical and talk about three things that I am really excited about. The first one is this system, the UMAP, user-centric map, where it is a crowdsourcing, user-centric, quality of experience-based recommendation system that has been designed for telecommunication services but we have also applied for water distribution networks and also medical type of services. Then I'm going to discuss about modeling the quality of experience using data mining algorithms. And last, I'm going to give two, uh, I think, powerful uh, paradigms for modeling large scale markets. So let's envision this UMAP system. You have the customers running, let's say, different telecom uh, services on their mobile phone, and the UMAP runs as a client-to-server uh, system. The client on the smartphone, during the service, collects measurements, collects, collects measurements from the infrastructure. These are stored locally initially at the mobile device. They are uploaded periodically at the UMAP server, that hosts a data center, and all these measurements, the uh, measurements from the users, are going to be analyzed later to improve the different services, provide recommendations, provide alerts. I'd like to emphasize that apart from the objective measurements, 
from the infrastructure that it is in place to support the different services, for example, voice over IP, video, games, uh, water distribution networks, as I said, or even e-health services, uh, the user is active. He can also assess with an opinion score his or her quality of experience, how he or she perceives this service. So all these measurements, subjective and objective, are collected at this UMAP server, where the data analytics are going to be applied. And this paradigm that really tries to put the, to place the user in the loop and the power of the user is very much aligned to international efforts. For example, BEREC, this organization for communications, uh, really tries to empower customers and talk about net neutrality and talk about transparency and providing more options to customers in the context of telecommunications. Similarly, similar statements you can find also for some other, like the Australian Communication Media Authority. So in this system, what we can see is that we have all these, let's say, Google Maps or different types of maps, where there are different scores collected, scores from users. And here, the user, uh, when, let's say, visits a new area and he doesn't know who is the best service provider, he can select uh, using a Google map the area of interest and then send a query. So the system, the UMAP system, analyzes all this collected data, all this data that have been collected from different users, and provides recommendations based on the best uh, provider according to all the objective and subjective measurements in this specific area of interest. This area of interest could be a, a kind of like polygon shape or even a hallway. That, and these are system, these are shapes, areas that the user could define through this GUI. <coughs> so one way to think of this system is having three components. There is the systems component that I just described, and then there are all these data analytics that will be performed at the data center using all these objective and subjective measurements. And then the modeling of these markets through this modeling and simulation framework that we have developed. But let's ask a, an even more technical and more important question. How does the performance of the infrastructure affect the customer experience? Well, one way to address this question is to try to use models or develop models. The models could be, for example, uh, the weber fechner law or the IQX hypothesis, which are logarithmic or exponential functions uh, that they have a physiological, uh, let's say, um, it is, uh, they express a physiological phenomenon and connect mathematically how the user, how the performance of the infrastructure, for example, the network, uh, is translated, is mapped, is perceived by a user. So it has a, they have a logarithmic or an exponential form. And they have been used extensively in the area of telecommunications for video or audio services. Then we can have other functions, mathematical functions, that connect the price, the willingness to pay, uh, and uh, some QS metrics to a utility function, to a user experience. But in general, um, it's, not a simple, um, it's not a simple problem, because there are a lot of technical, sociological, psychological, economical factors, aspects, that affect the customer satisfaction. For example, it could be the brand name. It can be how reliable is this, cast this provider. It can be related to the content. Uh, brand name, perceived value, and not only QoS metrics, like the data rate, delays, throughput, etc. So it's very uh, difficult to model this problem and even more difficult to try to monetize it. So what we did is we applied different machine learning and data mining algorithms like decision trees, Gaussian-based models, uh, neural networks, um, uh, support vector regression, um, different type of algorithms in an in a innovative framework to try to predict uh, the quality of experience, the customer satisfaction. 
So this is how this framework looks like. Um, one of the innovative aspects it is that it automatically, dynamically, per user, calibrates the different algorithms and selects the best algorithm uh, in each case according to the input, according to the measurements, uh, and tunes its parameters. So this is the main fr framework. I don't have the time to go to delve into the details, but you can find this information in, the, in our transaction paper that we had recently. So the UMAP is a cost-saving system because it is based on crowd so sensing and uh, crowd sourcing paradigm. And what it does is it, it performs all this QOE prediction this data analytics to provide recommendations to users according to their profile. So their profile here is how the network affects uh, the customer experience. So they are models, not mathematical functions, but rather algorithmic models, data mining models that map the network performance to quite of experience. However, this framework can be generalized. And the main vision, the long-term objectives, are to try to um, develop such systems to uh, improve the different services, to improve how we monitor and do the troubleshooting, provide real-time alerts, and also provide a nice test bed to roll out new services. But even there are important business aspects that can be integrated. For example, how this framework can enable you to assess different partnerships, agreements, to do pricing, to better understand the market, the customers, their customer satisfaction metrics, uh, and provide recommendations. So the long-term vision is through such paradigms to have smarter commerce, to do more efficiently the different data analytics, and have smarter computing. And hopefully, this is going to make things more convenient. Uh, they are going to save time. They are going to improve the customer satisfaction and provide profit. So we have applied this paradigm, as I mentioned earlier, for the water distribution networks and health services. And it's very exciting where now the infrastructure is a water distribution network. And the parameters that you measure through different sensors can be chemical or biological parameters. But you can see that the same paradigm that holds for the networks, for the wireless networks, you can use it also in this different domain. And this is also a published work. I mean, everything that I have discussed so far, you can find it in more detail in some publications that they are uh, at my site online. So let me go to the last part of my talk and say a few things about how to model these large-scale markets. Because their size and complexity of the interactions impose a lot of uh, challenges. So what you would like to do in this area is to try, for example, to uh, do business-driven analysis and try to analyze, assess different services, partnerships, um, decisions about extending or improving the infrastructure, doing capacity planning uh, or pricing. And you want to consider more realistic models about your population, right? And the population is heterogeneous. Uh, and it is large. And you have different entities that they may compete or, or cooperate, share resources, and in general interact. And so far, most of the models that exist do not really capture in depth all these interactions, considering the fact that, you know, the, the population of users, the population of providers is quite heterogeneous, is diverse. Quite often, what these efforts did are they are trying to study such problems either in a macroscopic scale or macroscopic scale. But in the microscopic scale, all they did is they made a lot of simplifications and they tried to model each entity um, each user at a fine level, microscopically. So this could be very accurate, but it's not scalable. It has a lot of computational complexity constraints. On the other hand, from the perspective of economics, operational research, or theoretical computer science, 
Quite often they try to model such problems um, macroscopically, but there they did even more simplifications to try to work out the mathematics. So their solution was scalable, they had a, it was amenable to analysis, but uh, it was not accurate. And this exactly trade-off between accuracy and scalability is at the core of my research. This is what we would like to address. So what we developed is a multi-layer uh, modeling framework that uses different innovative tools for network aggregation, structural aggregation, or decomposition, and enable you to design the models at the right, at the appropriate level of detail, in order to address exactly this trade-off between scalability and accuracy. So I'm going to use a few more minutes uh, to present in two slides some of the main uh, theoretical concepts in an abstract way. So the first concept is to try to do this aggregation using classic algorithms. So simply, uh, you can think of the macroscopic level where each entity, each distinct user is modeled. At the macroscopic level, you have one homogeneous population that you can model perhaps with an ODE. And then what you do is that you can apply different clustering algorithms to cluster the groups of users or even the groups of providers, distinguish the representative entities at each group, and then try to perform um, the analysis using these representative entities. In that way, you have reduced the uh, scale of the system. So this is the main idea. The second idea that can be also powerful is the following. Let's assume that you have a large network, a large infrastructure, that you model using a Markovian model. And you want, for example, to do capacity planning or to assess a system in a very small region of interest. By considering the entire network, the entire infrastructure, the entire Markov chain could be overwhelming computationally. What the Norton theorem, a theorem from physics actually, from circuits, allows you to do is to apply this aggregation. Namely, it shows you how to reduce the network in two networks, the network of interest, the network or infrastructure at the region of interest, and the one, the remaining one, and reduce the large remaining network and only focused on the net of, of interest. In that way, we have reduced the complexity of uh, the problem, of the system, significantly. So finally, let me just close this um, talk by trying to motivate you, motivate you one more time to consider doing research and the PhD uh, in this area. Uh, where there are exciting modeling problems, there are exciting systems problems, not only in networks, but also in different domains, for smart cities, for health, um, even for neural networks, biological networks. So, uh, and an amazing characteristic of computer science is exactly this interdisciplinary research that it enables us to do. So not only modeling or theoretical work, but also uh, more prototyping, more systems work. How to develop these systems, these services, this infrastructure uh, to support these new services in these uh, different domains. And of course, I'm sure for this, many exciting opportunities if you want to work in the industry. So thank you very much for your attention. You can find this work online at my site. Yes. I would like to thank you, Associate Professor Maria Padopoli, our invited speaker. And uh, we would like to invite um, our Dean, 
Michael Tarlakis and um, uh, Professor um, William van der Heuvel and uh, Professor Frank Lehmann in order to start the awards ceremony. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
who would like to invite a call with an FT.
we would like to invite Silvana Petranza Thierry. Yeah, but I think it's the best. 